Well, you just saw it, so the cat's out of the bag on that one. Sure, SM7DB. Yes, we have a new SM7B, folks, except it's an SM7DB. I'm talking on the OG, which might be not obsolete. Um, we're going to get into all of it. We're going to get into all of it. Let's go. Actually, not real sure why I tried to do a segue there, because it already happened. So, <laughs> all right, let's just go. Uh, sure, sent over the Sure SM7DB. Thank you to the folks at Sure for trusting me to do this thing justice, uh, trusting me with their world-renowned brand, and uh, and sending me something that is brand spanking new. SM7DB. What is it? What is it? We're still talking on the regular SM7B, but what this is is a SM7B with a cloud lifter built in. Now, let's talk a little bit about that. It says activated by cloud, optimized by Sure. So just because I want to be very transparent, cloud basically licensed their technology to Sure. So cloud is the inspiration for sure making a preamp for the SM7B, SM7DB now. That's first and foremost. Secondly, the price, $499. I'm going to talk about why that is fine here in just a moment after we unbox this thing, switch over to it, and continue this video about this very big surprise from sure that is going to solve a lot of problems for people who don't have an SM7B yet. Or maybe they do. And maybe, let's take a look at the mic and then we'll talk all about this thing. There really is a lot to unpack here besides the brand new microphone. There's so many thoughts when it comes to this microphone because this is, this is kind of that microphone, you know? It's the microphone that People just swear by, live and die by, all that good stuff. So we got a sweet Sure sticker. I freaking love stickers. Good sticker. We won't hurt you. I know someone who will, though. Uh, we've got a nice little Sure cover here. Just to be clear, inside of here we've got, inside of here, just to be clear, We've got the A7WS, I believe that's what it's called. I could be wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, the big one screen, the big one. Same thing here, again. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this as I'm unpacking it. We've also got the good old trusty nut. That's what she said. Um, but anyways, this microphone that I'm going to unveil right now. Oh, kind of. Ki kind of unveiling. You got the sure strap. You got the sure strap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This feels familiar. Also, what she said. Let's get rid of the box. Dang, son. Dang. Okay. If there's one thing you'll notice, and I think it's apparent, is it looks a little longer, right? It is. By a single centimeter, it is longer. Now, differences here. We've got the Sure Black logo, which is very reminiscent of sure black logo on the mvx2u how about that now here's something to talk about the timing of this release coincides really well with this release and this gets a whole lot better because of this i'll explain more in a minute on top we've got the sure sm7 green db logo there also on the underside, same thing. Sure SM7 Green DB. We got the same Spinarooski, the same XLR port. We've got a uh, little sticker on the shaft there. That's what she's shaft. Oh, oh. And by all means, this is pretty much the same. There's just one massive difference. Let's 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 take this off too, just so you can see. Like we are, we're the same here. We've got the same capsule, the same grill, the same internals. Every single thing about this microphone is the same as the SM7B. 
except when you get here. This is where things start to differentiate from the two microphones. We've got the same filters, okay? So we're still the same. Now, granted, the switches are so much easier to toggle. They actually protrude from the back of the microphone. No more sticking a pin in there, sticking a, you know, a phone SIM card poker. None of that. We've got a built-in preamp, which we've already talked about a little bit, but we can boost it 18 dB or 28 dB. And I'll talk about why that's also super important. And also, the switches are super easy to turn on and off. The bypass, the preamp, bypass, slide over, phantom power is needed. This is also really cool, and I'll talk about why. Uh, I didn't see a cover. Yeah, we're lacking the cover that goes on the back of this, which, man, that's just, isn't that something? That is, it, would you just look at that? Would you, would you just look at it? And now would you just listen to it? Would you just listen to it? Just listen to it. Sure, SM7DB. It's kind of crazy how much one centimeter makes a difference. Oh yeah, that is indeed what Sure said. But it really does. It looks just ever so slightly longer. I'm not going to keep doing it. I'm sorry. This is some talking points on this thing. Let's switch over. I was running the SM7B and the SM7DB just for sound comparison. Want to stick with the same interface for a minute, but it was going into the CAD Connect CX1 just because I wanted to show this in the B-roll and talk about it before I plug it up. But let's let's go to this device now. Okay, so now we've got the Shure MVX2U plugged in. This is a match made in heaven right here as far as Shure products go. Before we turn on Phantom Power, I am on a 52.5 dB to get roughly negative 10, negative 12 dB on my readout meters. So... I guess let's go ahead with the MVX2U and switch over to the 18 dB Phantom Power Booster. Okay, so now we've got the 18 dB boost enabled, and I was able to roll it back from 52.5 dB on the Shure MVX2U down to about 34 dB. So quieter, we're just a little over halfway up on the gain dial of the MVX2U. Let's enable 10 more decibels of power to the 28 dB boost. Okay, so with the 28 dB boost on, we're at 25 on the gain on the MVX2U, which just had a firmware update, by the way. That's like the third or fourth one. So I, I have a good feeling that maybe they've fixed the, the bump noise floor thing, maybe. Anyways, we're just going to leave it boosted 28 for the rest of the video. Mic gain, good to go. Uh, hitting right at about 10 dB. Actually, a little hotter than that, but we'll just roll with it. I'll adjust and post just a tiny bit to level match, but this is pretty, pretty close. Let's talk about the reason why this may be the $499 purchase that you want to make. One, if you don't have an SM7B, I would roll with the SM7DB because you get that phantom power activated booster inside this. This is where this comes in. You can cut out the box in between the cables. You can cut out the FET head and then that running into a cable and then da 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 da, -da. You can cut out all that stuff. And MVX2U married to this, phantom power, good to go. This is a great combination. The release of this and then this I am a fan of how they did that because these two things make perfect sense. This right here is your whole setup. If you want an SM7B, you want to go full sure, blacked out, murdered out. By the way, the color scheme is the same. It's a glossy black, glossy black, as opposed to the matte black on the old SM7B. But here's what I like about the price of $499. A, you cut out the box, you cut out the third piece of equipment for 99 more dollars, 100 bucks more, sorry. You you've got that set up whereas you used to buy a cloud lifter. Now, yeah, you can get other mic boosters for less than 100 dollars, but this is built in. Reason number 2. There's a company by the name of Truman Audio that has been 
implanting mic boosters into the SM7B for a long time now, and that was a pretty cool thing they were doing, but it's $549 for an SM7B with their booster. So essentially, this is cheaper, and you get it from Sure, and the mic booster is technically of Sure brand as well. The selectable gain switch is really nice because not every interface is lacking 28 dB to drive this thing. There's a Comica AD5 Link Flex sitting behind me somewhere that the freaking gain range is already insane to where it's hard to get a condenser level right. You have to have it zeroed out for a condenser to hit like negative 10 dB. For that interface, I would only use the 18 dB boost on this instead of the 28. So there's variety. You don't always need all the gain. You might just need half the gain boost. You might have a pretty good interface, but it gets just slightly hissy with the SM7B. So a good way to mix that would be the plus 18 instead of the plus 28. Or you might have a turd interface like, you know, a plug on recorder or something like that. Something weak, something UM2, Behringer UM2 then I would probably use the whole 28 dB boost. So it's nice to have that option. Also, the bypass is pretty nice because listen, not every interface has phantom power. I know it's rare these days, but a lot of people use analog equipment. And if you bought this with the intention of just having the whole shebang a bang in one, instead of paying 400 for the old SM7B, you go ahead and sink in five for the newer one to have that active preamp available when and if you need it. But the bypass ensures that you don't have to use it at all times. You could plug into a piece of analog gear somewhere that doesn't have 48 volts of phantom power or something like that, Tascam DR10X that doesn't have phantom power built in, plug on recorder, I can still use this with that. So they're covering all the bases here by having a bypass switch to either use phantom power or not use phantom power. And sure does claim that literally every single piece inside this microphone is the same as this, except for that preamp except for that one centimeter extra length in the canister in the back and the glossy black with the sure logo that's a little different but otherwise everything is the same besides the switches in the preamp and the glossy black so in my opinion if you need a preamp for one of these why not go with the one with it built in and the great thing about this update is if you don't need any of that, the most famous microphone in the world is still available and I don't think they have any plans to discontinue it. You now have the passive and active options from Sure. That's pretty much my thoughts. I don't really have much to say about the sound. Why? Because it's an SM7B with a D in front of the B instead of a SM7C which I saw someone requesting, like, when's the SM7C coming out? Well, essentially, this is it, but it's called the DB instead of the C. But, sure, MVX2U, sure, SM7DB, really cool couple of releases. And I actually really enjoy the new sure green that they've implemented over the past few years being a part of that. I actually really, I like this not so easy to see sure logo doesn't bother me a bit i actually like that the canisters a little longer for the purpose of like adjusting the mic my whole hand fits on that that's what she said my pinky hangs off of this one just a little but on this one oh that is comfy in the hand not to mention folks if you want this and you already have an sm7b and a preamp and maybe some other stuff that you don't need. Maybe throw in a scissor arm, scissor arm, boom arm, one of those arms, desktop stand, something. Potentially, you could sell your old SM7B, your cloud lifter, a cable, and some other stuff, and get enough money to pay for this outright. That's what I do. That's what I will do. The SM7B, I have a hard time keeping it because the resale value is pretty good on it. Now I can just keep this. Anytime we run into an interface, can it drive the SM7B? Oh wait, oh no. Is this no longer the standard to test interfaces with? Because now it will work with any freaking interface without any more purchases? 
What will we do? What will we do? I guess we'll just throw the bypass switch on just to test preamps. That way, silly question for me to even ask. I'm not going to BB SAR this because really it is an SM7B with an active preamp inside. Switch on phantom power. You're good to go. $499, $100 more to have it built in and to have a selectable switch, which the SE TNT little preamp that's the only one I can think of that has a selectable switch and that thing's almost 200 bucks. So again, like it may seem like it's a hundred more dollars. Like, man, it would have been cool if they made it for 50 or 79. There's a lot that went into this. I'm okay with the price. I'm not blown away by the price, but I'm very okay with the price because again, if you have an SM7B, it's time to let it go. The SM7DB is in town. And now the used market for the SM7Bs will probably get a little better. So if you want that SM7B, which now the SM7B becomes a classic, kind of like those SM7s rolling around at a thousand bucks online. Now you got the vintage SM7B and the modern SM7DB. Anyways, at the bottom of everything, this is a proper update to go with a proper update of the X2U. Sure's modernizing and making it easier for everyone out there who wants that sure SM7B look and sound to get it and not have to struggle with getting the right levels or struggle with ease of use. Sure, thanks for sending over the SM7DB. It is greatly appreciated as this is a, again, like I said, it's a proper update to a classic. I'm excited to see how many of these we see on people's mic stands next because you know it's going to happen. SM7DB is out of here. Bark's out of here. See you guys next time on Obscure Mics. Peace out.